Hello and welcome to this introductory video outlining the A-level art and design course that's offered at Old Swinford Hospital 6 form. If you've got any questions following the video, you can contact the subject lead, Miss Pincher, or you can contact myself. So to run through the course, um, the A-level AQA uh, art and design course is a two-year course. Um, with the, the, uh, the way that the exams and uh, courses for lots of other subjects are split up. Art is an anomaly. Art is different to all other subjects. So you have um, two particular components that make up the final uh, grade for your particular course. Um, we've got one which is a personal investigation and that's worth 60% and then you've got a, an exam but it's a controlled exam um, and that's worth 40%. So it might be better actually to talk about how the two years of study will look for you rather than going into detail about the personal investigation or the controlled exam. So when you arrive in September um, and, and in October as well, it's really just trying to gather images, ideas, um, and, and for the first few months really of the, the A-level course, you'll be running little workshops um, with Miss Pincher and Miss Billington um, to try and gain knowledge, gain skills, gain understanding about different areas of, of artistic styles um, and also some specialist uh, areas of study. Now in January of year 12 what you do is you then start to the first phase really of portfolio planning for your personal investigation. So even though the personal investigation is not due in until uh, year 13, you, you really begin that proper in January and February after those first few months of gathering ideas and, and trying to, to work out what exactly you want to focus on. In February, March, April what you do is you critique uh, so you look at each other's pieces of work and um, you make comments, you give feedback to each other and you learn about the process of, of giving feedback in a, as a collective as part of the art of design course. In May you have a mock examination so that will be the first proper reflection that you have uh, on the first phase of the personal investigation and in June and July um, you're continuing to develop those skills, knowledge and understanding that bring depth to the personal investigation. So that's, that's really um, what you're doing in the first year. So it's really focusing in on, on that 60% of your overall A-level, which is the uh, personal investigation. In year 13, that continues on, um, but at the same time, you start thinking about this externally set exam or externally set assignment. Um, with the, the personal investigation, it runs up until uh, January of year 13, um, and it's completed then. You then should have a rough idea about what you need to be doing uh, to get the mark that you want for your externally set assignment. Now the externally set assignment is 40% of your overall grade and it will be testing the same sorts of skills that you'll have learned from your personal investigation. It's 15 hours of supervised work and it's, it's done in a concentrated block and um, before the 15 hours of supervised work as well you have a certain idea about what um, the externally set assignment is going to be for that particular year. If you've got any questions about that, if you contact Miss Pincher, she's got a booklet um, that will guide students to make that transition to, to A-level study of art. Um, and if there's anything that haven't been quite clear about or anything that you want to, to just double check, you can ask Miss Pincher for, for that booklet and she'll be able to pass that on. Likewise, um, you can always just email me and I'll be able to share that as well. So as I've said already, the department is led by Miss Pincher and Miss Billington is the art technician um, who will be there for, for pretty much all of your lessons as well. In terms of the, the art department, the thing that really sets it apart from um, you know, other providers of, of art courses is the, the strong pass rate. Um, and that's been consistent over the past three years. So schools are measured in something called value added uh, and the art department's value added score, um, essentially how much value does the department add compared to um, previous uh, departments um, is, is outstanding uh, and is our strongest. If you're looking at the 2019 results as an example of that, 38% of students last year got an A star in the course. 92% um, of students got an A star to C grade and all students got a pass grade. Now considering that art is quite a popular course, that's a very, very impressive track record. Um, as part of the, the process of learning these skills, um, what Ms Pincher does as well is embed field trips into the delivery program so that students can see how uh, artists are, are applying these particular skills in their own work. 
there's an open door department um, it's an open door feel um, and there's good integration between the year 12s and the year 13 so that picture that you can see in the bottom right is of year 12 and 13 students on a field trip uh, but the the thing that's quite interesting is that the year 13s will go through their particular personal investigations with year 12 so that they can see uh, what kind of level they need to be getting at and, and the fact that there's that integration between the two year groups also gives more um, uh, more knowledge to the students but also gives more uh, chances for social interactions and, and new friendships. To study A-level art you need to meet the school's minimum entry requirements of seven pass grades uh, but you also need to ensure that you have a grade five in your art. Um, some students uh, also like to provide a portfolio of work to show to Miss Pincher to get some ideas flowing before the start of year 12. Um, the desirable traits that we're really looking for for the department are because your personal investigation is going to be something that you're going to choose and, and, and a branch of art that you're particularly interested in, um, you need to, to ensure that you're willing to spend a lot of your free time researching uh, more about that specific chosen area and gaining new ideas, particularly in that first term um, when you're, you're gathering ideas. That's a, that's a really crucial thing for you to do. The second thing that we're really looking for is students that are organised in their time because you're going to have to spend a sufficient amount of time um, putting in those hours for your particular projects, for those workshops, for those skills uh, in the department and that can actually be a lot of the time in your study uh, time, so when you don't have a lesson. So as a consequence you need to make sure that you're able to balance that with the other two subjects. And these are traits as well that uh, are advantageous before the start of sixth form study but will help you out, uh, out with when you, um, when you join the sixth form. And that links in nicely to the kinds of pathways that you can take with art because art is um, a, a course that is designed to provide you with the transferable skills that employers are really looking for. So being able to develop individual ideas, individual project ideas, to collaborate with others, to critique others, to show those kind of observational research analytical skills, to solve problems as they encounter and to, to understand that working through a project, particularly a long project, is going to encounter problems that you hadn't perhaps foreseen. So having that resilience to be able to, um, to overcome those particular problems, to be open to new influ influences and, and uh, constructive criticism, how to set up um, businesses and, and entrepreneurial ideas as well. So art and design is all about those um, transferable skills. You know, we're not saying that every single student is going to, to leave the school and become a fine artist. It's, it's the um, it's the skills that we're really trying to instill um, from you. So you can work in a range of different creative areas, so painting, drawing, print, sculpting, um, you know, any jobs within the media sector. Um, you can learn um, you know, from this particular exercise your dexterous ability and it might be that you want to go into a particular vocation, so photography or plastering or painting, pottery, glasswork, um, but really art can be used for anything and I think that if we look at how some students have used their art and design course for, for university study, you can, you can see that. So if we take um, Ernest and, and Tom and Max, for example, last year, um, you know, Ernest you know, combined art with Chinese, maths and RE and philosophy, so a real range of subject areas there. He's studying fine art at the moment at Loughborough um, and he's decided that he wants to take his, his course uh, further. What sometimes students do as well is they might do the um, the art and design A level combined with some other subjects um, and they might then do an art foundation degree um, and that's then something that they need in order to progress further in, in their artistic skills so sometimes that happens as well you can see that Max has decided that he's going to take his art studies to do architecture and he's doing that at the University of Nottingham Tom for example um, combined art with um, some sciences, so BTEC science and, and with biology, and he's reading agriculture. So art is a good subject that all universities will look at strongly. Um, it's interesting as well how differently people like Ernest will be, have been assessed across his different subject areas. So art and design with, with the personal investigation and the externally set assignment um, is very different to the, the three exams that you'll get in mathematics, which are um, you know, short exercises, uh, lots of questions, and then compare that to the RE and philosophy course, which is three exams and uh, is all essay based. So art and design is, is, you know, for some students that welcome 
um, subject that is actually a, a different form of assessment compared to the other subjects that they've chosen. Let's move on now to the, the work that's required of you over the summer. Um, so we've got expected tasks to make sure that you're consolidating your GCSE skills and your work to broaden your subject horizons. And then the essential thing that you need to complete for September are the bridging tasks. Now, in terms of consolidating GCSE work, um, because you're, if you did GCSE art, because everything was, was cut short prior to your particular examination, your external exam, it's not really going to be the case that you can build on any knowledge that you've, you've got from the, the GCSE course. So what Ms Pinch has done is she said that if anybody wants to consolidate some of that material to contact her so that she, she can share this particular booklet, likewise you can contact me and I can share this with you. And within that there's a suggested area of cultural knowledge. So these are books and podcasts and music and reading that people can listen to so that they can get inspiration for their ideas for their personal investigation. So um, there's, there's a whole host of different topics that Ms Pincher is suggesting, but she's essentially saying that in order to improve what you've done at GCSE, you need to increase your cultural capacity um, and um, your cultural knowledge. And you can do that over the summer holidays. And it might be a welcome task for, for many of you to do, because it might not feel as though as it's, it's work per se, because actually what you're doing is you're just building um, your, your cultural knowledge. To broaden your subject horizons, um, there's a few things that we would suggest. There's the Modern Art Notes podcast, which is about um, particularly uh, contemporary art um, and contemporary artists. So it's something that you can find on, on Google. It's, it's been going for a long time. You can see that they're on episode number 453 at this particular point. Uh, but you can scroll back through and you can look at historians and artists and authors talking about specific um, artists and, and work that's being presented. It's quite diff difficult to have a podcast that's successful for art because obviously you want to see the work, that's the, the main point of this. Um, but they do manage to, to get this, this fine balance quite well, so I would recommend that you have a look at that. Um, it'd be interesting as well if you've got time to watch um, Ai Weiwei's Never Sorry, um, so that's a film about the Chinese artist Ai Weiwei. Uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a really powerful um, video for you to watch. It's, it's a documentary and it's, it's about Ai Weiwei's um, imprisonment by the Chinese authorities um, and particularly his his approach to art. So, um, you know, he's been criticised by many as being somebody that actually uh, deconstructs to the level where he's destroying uh, certain art. So the, the famous example would be the, the urn that he drops, the, the you know, the thousand year old uh, Chinese uh, urn that he, he destroyed and, and captured as, in a series of photographs. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see his take about how people should be approaching art. Finally, you can go onto YouTube and, and type in the art assignment. Um, it's a series of videos that uh, goes through and, and profiles specific artists. So Ai Weiwei is one of them, for example, but you've got individuals like Kanye West, um, you've got more um, what, what we might perhaps consider to be traditional artists as well. Um, and it would just, just give you that cultural knowledge as well that, that Miss Pincher really wants you to have before you start the course. With the bridging task, so these are the essential things that we want you to do. We want you to do the middle task as an, uh, as an absolute must, so you must do that middle white task. But, and you can choose two of the activities from around the outside. So the thing that you must do is you must write a 500 word response because as part of the art course you will have to do written um, uh, supplementary uh, essays alongside your personal investigation, so you still need to write. Um, we'd like you to write um, a 500 word response that's about a page answering, uh, exploring the question why is art so important in today's culture? So essentially why study art? What's the point of art? Um, why would we say to the next generation that this is something that they should pursue? The other activities that you can do, you can choose two as a minimum, you can do as many as you want, and they should be handed in September as well. So I'll go through each one, um, they're pretty straightforward, you should know about some of these particular you know, uh, skill sets anyway. So take 20 photographs based around your theme, produce a tonal observation drawing from one of your uh, photographs. So choose the theme, take 20 photographs that uh, are around that particular topic, you can use your phones if you want, and then that tonal observation drawing from one of your photographs is something that, again, we just improve your skill sets and just make sure that you're keeping up with your drawing skills over the summer. 
Ask at least five people uh, what their ideas, thoughts and interpretation of the theme is and document this within your project. You can visit galleries online during lockdown, so we would suggest that you do that. Make notes on relevant artist work related to your theme. If you are feeling adventurous um, and you're feeling as though you're able to, some galleries might open before September. Um, I have heard that the National Gallery is opening and it's doing a one-way system, um, so that might be something that you're able to do, but only do that if you're able. Uh, create a piece of work in relation to your theme using materials of your choice. Photograph the development of this from start to finish. Create a response to your chosen theme using material that uh, you would not usually use to make art. So for example, try painting with red wine or coffee, or make a collage with discarded objects to try and be as, um, as abstract as possible. You could create a Pinterest board. If you don't have Pinterest, it would be a useful thing to sign up for. Um, based on your chosen theme, talk through the images you, you have with a family member or a friend and ask how they relate to your theme. Ask them for feedback, how you could progress and make sure that you document your progress. That's really crucial um, for when you're going to do the A-level art course. You'll do a lot of documentation uh, throughout. Find a piece of art that inspires you. You can relate that to the mini project theme that you've got in your mind um, and write a 500 word analysis of your chosen piece, reflecting on both the subject and the techniques that are used. And finally, the other uh, task that you could go for, consider the aspect of scale in your work. So create a piece of work based on your theme that is very small, one that is very large, as large as you can make it. Photograph your work and write a paragraph on each discussing the merits of scale. So the, the whole idea for this is if you do the middle task and choose two of the other things that in your first few lessons with Miss Pincher, the rest of the class will be able to bring in all their ideas. You'll be able to start looking at what people are, have got as initial um, themes and you'll be able to start having those group discussions. If you've got any questions from any of this, you can contact Miss Pincher or you can contact myself. Um, and what we'd suggest that you do before you start the next video um, as, as part of your induction warning is have a look at some of the things that have been referenced here. Have a look online. Make sure that you've made notes. Uh, make sure that you've got some things that you can be doing. Thank you very much for listening and watching.